Hi everyone, this is Nisha Kohli from Cop Stage. If you are a CEO or a senior leader, here's the truth. The biggest risk that you face today with AI is not that it will replace your people, but it is basically to underestimate what it can do for your business. Most companies are still treating AI as a technology project or as, as an IT uh, project to be dealt with by the digital team or a tech team inside the organization. And some of them are considering as, you know, let's try, let's experiment it and uh, let's install a few things and see. But actually to receive the full impact and to show your leadership, it's important to to undertake and think about AI as a strategy and to prioritize and to uh, understand that, you know, how it is going to change the entire business model. So through this uh, video today, uh, I'll be taking you through a case study from Harvard, which is about Shell and which is a perfect example of how AI can quietly transform a small operational tool into an entirely new business line. And uh, this Howard case discussion is very simple, practical, and absolutely applicable to other organizations as well. So <laughs> let's start with something a uh, little uncomfortable. Um, that most CEOs frame AI in a completely wrong way. They ask, such as, what tool should we buy? Where can we use AI cost savings? Which vendor is best? And I mean, these are fine questions, but they are not leadership questions. Howard research actually shows only a small fraction of companies that are extracting real benefits from, and I, I, I mean, I should say real measurable benefits from AI, and almost no one of them can get there by installing AI as a tool. So they, I mean, if businesses want to achieve transformation, they have to consider is as a leadership responsibility and the conversation should shift from which tool to adopt to what new advantage can we create possibly in a year or two years with AI. I mean, what's the end value that we're going to get out of this implementation? So let's look at this case study on Shell, which originally built a system using sensors and AI to do something very simple, uh, basically to monitor lubricant condition inside their heavy industrial machines. It was for prediction of failures and maintenance, so um, and avoid equipment damage, um, to save their downtime and basically to improve their operational performance. But while, you know, initially they implemented it with that intent, but something very interesting happened. The insights the system produced were so accurate and so useful for the business that even customers started saying, can we actually get this tool to monitor their equipment too? So suddenly an internal efficiency tool became something uh, like a commercial product, uh, a business, a new business model, vertical altogether. So Shell eventually lost, uh, launched actually Vital YX or Vital EX as a, as a standalone monitoring service that other companies could also buy from them. Now, this was a real strategic leap, and this leap didn't come from engineers, but it actually came from the leaders who didn't even understand the technology, and they asked that if this is valuable for us to implement 
AI and how valuable could it be for others as well. Now this case actually discusses something really very big that AI is not just to improve operations but it can actually reshape the business overall, it can transform the business overall. Uh, we can see similar things um, in the company, I mean in the world's famous company Amazon and even DBS Bank which did it the same way, turning internal AI components into a reusable platform. And Shell did it by turning analytics uh, which they derive from the tool into a product. And so, you know, what this particular example helps us to answer these questions, um, that what problems do we uniquely own? Not all problems are equal in the organizations. So Shell wasn't just a monitor, was, wasn't just able to monitor lubricants, they owned deep global operational insight into heavy machinery. So they were able to get, draw down those numbers. Um, and every organization has one or two problems with the uniquely positioned to build AI advantage. So for leaders, it's a responsibility or it's a proactiveness that's required to find those problems which they can solve with AI. And where is the real value pool? That's the second question that they should ask that what value clusters um, we can look at, maybe productivity, maybe new revenue, risk reduction, customer experience will improve, uh, or what will happen. So Shell realized that the real value pool was not just operational savings, but it was also uh, a demand, uh, uh, something, a service which they could provide to their customers. And then uh, they also understood that how they could leverage the value of AI which they were extracting. So other question could be that how can you make this tool a customer facing product? So this is the question which no leadership team asks, that how to turn these internal dashboard into revenue engines. So if your organization has built something internally, it could be a forecasting model, a prediction tool, a risk engine, or a price estimating tool. So don't just assume that it belongs to your own company. Look at it with a fresh eyes and see how you can derive more value out of that tool. Other questions which leaders should look at is what capabilities do we need to build so that we don't get stuck as in pilots. Now, most companies die in the pilot bureaucracy, not because the AI doesn't work, because they don't have the capabilities to scale that. So the research is very clear. AI success depends on maturing five things. And those five things should be matured simultaneously. So the first one is about the governance. Companies should have proper AI governance. Second is the data quality. Third, the technology that they're using, the platform. Um, fourth is about the workflows, re designing of workflows. And then fifth is about the people, talent, culture. If any of these five things don't work, uh, scalability, is difficult to achieve. So what does great leadership look like in the age of AI? Um, from studying, actually I studied dozens of cases around this, including the sh shell, which I'm you know talking here, but Marriott Hotels, Unity Health, DuPont, DBS, uh, they all have the similar pattern and they think in platforms and not pilots. So they, they build reusable components and not just one of experiments. They treat data as an asset and not a byproduct of this technology implementation. So AI does need good data and the way finance needs good numbers 
AI needs those numbers. But leaders should invest in this data early on. And then once you have a big data, I mean, you can analyze and, and draw meaningful inferences out of that. So leaders design AI to augment people and not to replace them. And this is a myth around AI. It's the highest performing organizations actually um, call AI as a co-pilot. The key takeaway from this video is that AI is not going to replace leaders, but leaders who ignore AI will absolutely be replaced by those who know how to use it strategically. Now, your role as a leader is not to understand every algorithm. You don't necessarily have to be an engineer or a tech person to understand it. Your role is to set the direction, build capability, and ask questions that can lead you to value clusters, such as generating revenue, savings, new business vertical, new model. The real comparative advantage will belong to those people, those leaders, who can separate the signal from the entire chaotic you know, noise and who can turn down, who can turn insights into new systems, operating models and generating new revenues. Because um, AI is here to amplify leaders' performance who know where they are going. Um, and it is a performance driver, but it has to be used with those five capabilities which I described. So take this as a positive thing to implement, but look at it from the strategic point of view, not just as an experiment for a short term. And once you have piloted it well, then scale it and look at what it can give as a value and whether you can use it for your customers as well. So. Stay tuned for the next video. Thank you very much.